What foods do you crave more than anything during Ramadan? Bakore. Uh, cereal. Samosa. Chocolate. Uh, smoothies. Fruit shot. I forgot to say wings. Ooh, wings. I'm always craving. Actually, I'm craving wings on the daily. Yeah, I'm but, craving wings right now. But during the fast, it gets it gets yeah. real. Sometimes when you start seeing food, you're just like, the foods that you don't even normally eat, you're like, okay, I'm going to eat that for uh, iftar. I'm going to eat that. I'm going to eat that. And then when the time actually comes, comes, you, you don't eat, eat you it. You eat like fruit and two You're like, I'm full. Yeah. Yeah. But, but fruit shot is like the best part. I don't know why it's so refreshing in Ramadan. That's Honestly, fruit is the best thing that you can have because... It's like healthy, nutritious. Mm-hmm. You get your sugars in. Yeah. And yeah, like it's it's refreshing. Mm-hmm. Except those aunties that put too much like masala. masala. Oh no. And I don't really like chickpeas in there. In the in the fruit shop. Yeah. Or the kidney beans. Have you seen that? Yeah. Kidney beans in there. Sometimes oh, no. there's a lot of people that ruin it, but um. Just overall, keep it simple. Cut keep up the fruit and just keep it. Oh, simple. oh, the ones that just put like n- just just fruit. Oh my god! Is the best. That's that's the, the most. Best. And then sometimes when they put a watermelon in it, oh, stop. So good, so refreshing. Um, welcome everybody to a Ramadan special edition of Strange Flavors. This is brought to you by Alif Theory. My name is Faraz. My name is Amber, and you can send us an email. Even, you, <laughs> okay, listen. You can email us and send us your music at strangeflavorspodcast at gmail.com. And please be sure to like and subscribe on the podcast app on SoundCloud. SoundCloud? That's what it's called, right? The way that you make fun of Shamir is the way that you're talking right now. I know. That voice that you're like, please yeah. subscribe to us on this app. But you know what they could do? They could really go on Anchor. Because if you go on Anchor, we're there. And, <laughs> <laughs> and on Spotify, if you didn't know. On we're Spotify, we're not there. We out here. We out di- here. We out here is different energy than we there. Mm-hmm. We're also on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. But yes, we yeah. out here. You can you know do all that stuff. And we have merch. Ooh. Yeah, we got merch. It's all linked in the bio. Um, we actually are on sale for uh, our Ronopono and Alif Theory 50% merch. 50% off. Literally 50% off. Uh, we're almost out of everything. I don't know if by the time you listen to this, we'll be out. But go check. It'll be linked down below. Um, hats. We have a good amount of hats. That hats. We, yeah. yeah. Still, still got some hats. Hats. hats and those. There. And those are hats that were like really, really cute. I'm gonna say these hats are probably my favorite round of hats that we've had. True. Yeah. They're, they're pretty good. They're, cute. they're good quality. Oh yeah. Which actually we had you test them all out. Mm-hmm. And that was your pick. Yeah. The ones that are there now. And they really go with just like everything. Throw me that so, hat. If you're on YouTube one, you can see. Ooh, yes, hat model. Ooh, promo, it's on our promo. Instagram. Boom, right there. Um. So yeah, like I said, this is our uh, Ramadan special, mm-hmm. um, and and this was um, something different we decided to do uh, this year because I feel like there's a lot of um, a lot of Muslims and non-Muslims that kind of have these questions that are always lingering or not fully answered, or they feel scared to ask them and stuff. So that's why we opened it up. We brought on a scholar who is a friend of ours mm-hmm. and. Um, He's going to be the guest today um, when we introduce him later. But um, yeah, like this, I think that we kind of tackle a lot of things that like always are on a lot of people's minds, but they're too afraid to say them. Yeah, So that would be cool. And you guys sent in so many questions. There's like over 100, right? Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. That's the most we've ever gotten. And like I'm and that really shows that there is a lot of things that people are wondering. So Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do our best to address um, all of it in 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 the best way possible we, way we know how to yes. um, we ask that you guys keep an open mind while listening to this episode too because this was definitely something where we brought questions that people had and kind of threw them at Mufti Saad versus just giving him topics to talk about itself so yeah. definitely look at it from that perspective and keep an open mind while listening to the whole conversation kind of see where the conversation is coming from Yeah, and just so like it's clear like you know the things that we're talking about are not regularly uh, addressed in like Uh, normal lectures and things like that um, every day at all by any means I mean uh, Saad actually used to be um, at our mosque uh, for Ramadan last year and the things he would talk about are really highlighting the beauty of Islam and like Mm -hmm. uh, you know regular topics it's not I think that a huge misconception is that like it's everybody uh, when they hear things about Islam is just like you can't do this you can't do that right. you can't. it's not like that at all like no, you no. know we're always talking about um, 
the, again, like I said, the beauty and, and, and you know, living um, this life out of love and, yeah. and learning from every day. Mm-hmm. Like nobody knows it um, just from the second they're born. We're learning about it every single day. So yep. there's a lot to it. Um, yeah. And, and uh, while you guys were sending questions, I also got a, um, a Venmo payment. What? You got, what do you mean? <laughs> like uh, someone said, follow me on IG. And then they said their IG, Packy King. Wait, wait, hold on. Did somebody <laughs> Venmo you to follow them on Instagram? Yeah. Like they paid you. They paid me. I think it's. I think they. It's from the uh, the diss track I made, um, the the diss track to the comment section, and they. And I was like, I had a line, and I was like, you know, treat me to lunch. Here's my Venmo. Mm. And probably from there, but then I was thinking, you I was put like, your real Venmo out there. Yeah, like I didn't. Okay, I was just like, I mean, not a bad idea. Good job for us. I mean, I didn't think anything of it, but then, then I was like, okay, so if I got uh, an X amount of money for each follow, I might have to start. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I sent it back to. Her. I was like, listen, it's fine. That's like, a good way. Like, hey, if you can't get somebody's attention, <laughs> she got your no, attention. No, please, please do not Venmo <laughs> me. Please do not Venmo me for a follow. That's not post. If you post dope content. Like I follow pretty much everybody that I follow is all art pages. Yeah, I think that's art, true. photography, uh, just creatives in general. Like I don't follow a lot of my own friends, sorry. Um, but like I don't want to see a selfie of you over and over again. Mm. But that's how it be. Anyways, good job to this girl though. You're, that was a that was a funny move. I I appreciate it. It got your attention. I I appreciate it. Hey, do your thing. Did you um, follow her though? No, I didn't even look it up. Her name's like Satan Spawn or something. Like, Wait, what? <laughs> like, relax. Okay, hold on, hold on. Ramadan's around the corner. We need to simmer down. Yeah, we're trying to get the Shaitan locked up. We're not trying to follow him. Oh, no, no, no. So, anyways, let's introduce our guest today. Um, like I said, uh, this is uh, Mufti, uh, who's like a scholar. Um, his name is Saad, and he will be answering pretty much every question that like you guys sent in in a condensed concise form uh in an organized fashion so many controversial topics oh my gosh (laughs) so again we hope you guys enjoy this i hope you guys get something out of it please give us feedback and uh subscribe to us keep your notifications on for us um and thank you for listening to this here is mufti saad we are here with saad at his masjid that you, you teach at right okay cool um, so we are going to be sitting with you today um, and sort of go over all these questions that people had sent in for you. This is our Ramadan edition of Strange Flavors. We actually got like over 100 questions. So thank you guys uh, for for sending all those in. They were from Muslims and non-Muslims. So this is pretty exciting. Um, and the way that I did it is we can't ask all of them because uh, that would take way too long. But a lot of you guys had sort of repeating questions and sort of similar ideas. So we organized it in a way that like maybe if one person's question kind of, you know, overall had the same mm-hmm. sort of uh, idea, then we're just going to ask that one. Um, and for the questions that were a little bit too uh, graphic, yeah. um, we want to like not go in that much detail for every age listener and whatever everybody feels comfortable with. So. Saad, what do you recommend that, like, if, if they have something that is, like, you know, they are actually seriously wondering, but it's a little bit too explicit, what can they do? Well, I would recommend that they visit their local scholars, the local imam, whoever they feel comfortable with mm-hmm. uh, addressing these issues with. They can speak to them. Um, and there are many great competent imams that they can speak to, inshallah, yeah. and, you know, seek their And Yahoo answers. Google always. <laughs> Mufti Google. Just kidding. Um, Mufti Google? <laughs> but also, yeah, we're, we're going to try to keep this... Um, fun and and entertain some of these questions but uh, also be informative at the end of the day so uh let's get right into it um and and i want to ask you first of all Saad, sort of your background and like what is your approach and and sort of like philosophy to teaching and and uh informing people of islam uh so i follow my teacher right my teacher his name is mufti ibrahim desai he's from south africa what's a mufti um, for people that don't know so a mufti is a b- person who's been uh, given the authority to issue verdicts in the religion, right? Meaning, so basically simplify things for others. So there are many issues which obviously were not uh, there in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, right? 
Um, so a mufti is one who derives from the Quran and Hadith and uh, basically simplifies and derives rulings based off of the Quran and Hadith for the uh, issues with pertaining to nowadays and the age which we're in today. Yeah, and when my friends and I met you, um, when you came to our mosque, one thing that we really liked about you was that like you do keep it very simple and like to the point and it makes it very easy to understand and also you're like you're chill like you're our age and like <laughs> yeah. you make it you make it yeah. comfortable yeah, yeah. so uh that's really nice so that's why i think it's it's nice to have you here on the podcast i mean thank you so much for you know inviting me as well and uh, of course I, I try my best again this is i've never done this before so yeah. if i do obviously you know uh, make mistakes or if I sound nervous or something that's obviously because it's my first time but uh, hopefully doing, I'll try my best great already. Already. <laughs> we're actually in his office yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> so the teachings I follow is by my teacher Mufti Ibrahim Desai he, he, he says that we should teach with love you know we should teach with, teach with compassion otherwise I mean if you do teach with compassion and love you find dividends later on in life a person becomes attached to that individual and to the religion as opposed to you know that specific class or that specific teaching right so for example uh, no matter how much you try you can never force someone to learn something which they don't want to right as opposed to you explaining something to them and you teaching them uh, you know through love and you know obviously explaining as much as possible um, that way it's you know they feel connected not only to the religion but also to that teacher and to that scholar you know so that's the you know ideology and the method and you know who I follow especially in my teaching that's you know, beautiful and everything. wow and love. Yeah. and Amber you can, you can just read it word for word because okay. that's how people wrote them so someone said I need definitions of these ASAP please and thank mm-hmm. you <laughs> Wallahi Astaghfirullah Yalla so Wallahi basically means I swear by I swear I swear by God you know I swear on Allah so yeah. that's that's not a big thing very commonly used yeah. <laughs> Wallah bro and, yeah. and it's yeah. usually usually it's not used <laughs> no, honestly <Yeah. laughs> it's not used honestly that's very true you know the people just want to emphasize a statement they just say Wallahi you know yeah. mm-hmm. Astaghfirullah uh, Astaghfirullah means you know forgive me or whatever you know you can say it. basically forgive me yeah. forgive me God Yalla Yalla is a, just come here yeah. or just like <laughs> come here just basically Hurry. like that yeah, like just get over there. here, you know, yeah. something like that, basically, mm. Allah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, s- someone asked, can Muslims have boyfriends slash girlfriends or date? What are the rules? Mm. All right. So, um, see, Islam is, is a pragmatic religion, right? In a sense that, um, obviously, there are certain guidelines to the religion, right? But at the same time, uh, you know, obviously, Islam considers everyone's feelings, right? Now, so, <clears throat> uh, now, it's not practical to assume that there are things in in the religion which you with you know obviously islam has like, like we mentioned islam has guidelines right but through those guidelines if we do follow those guidelines you know we'll find you know success and in, in that way right and that's just a premise for what i'm trying to get to is that <clears throat> islam does have rulings regarding uh dating and whatnot right so now of course a person who wants to marry another individual you know they should uh take the proper steps and the, and the right you know method of approaching that entire situation so a person who wants to get married um they obviously they can't be intimate and all of that you know those of course that's for after marriage we in islam we believe that a person should save that for after marriage so that you know of course it's you know basically legal according to the islamic standpoint right so <clears throat> it's not permissible to you know fornicate or obviously you know do the int- you know, obviously be intimate and whatnot Right. Aside from that, you know, you want to talk within confinements, it's it's permissible. You know, of course, you need to get to know the person before, obviously, you, you decide to marry that individual. You know what I mean? So, so like Minder, Dill Mill, all these <laughs> apps, like, does that, so, I mean, does that be, work? I mean, they uh, obviously, obviously, you know, to a certain degree, right? Mm. Now, uh, what I've heard, and I could be wrong, right? <laughs> They're more used as a, as a sort of hookup Hook site, you know what I mean? As opposed to actual, hmm. you know, marriage, you know, I apps or some websites. of those are pretty serious, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, like the dating. new age for hmm. shadi.com Meeting. or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's like biodata, but swipeable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah. obviously, I've never found it, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, I mean, these are uh, obviously in this day and age, you need different ways to connect with different people. Sure. And obviously, America and, 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 you know, the world being so huge, obviously, there's so many people um, that there is, it's not possible. Sorry. There was this one, uh, this one uh, imam we had one time, and he was talking yeah. about Tinder. Yeah. And he was like, uh, he was like, brothers, do you know what your daughters are doing? He's like, you should actually let them have the Tinder, but you should have access to the Tinder profile. He's like, so, so, 
you should have the password and you should be talking on the behalf of the uh, the daughters <laughs> on the Tinder. I was like, yeah, I get what you're trying to go after, but like people would Not freak out. <laughs> um, okay, That's so this catfishing is catfishing to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so this this is um, we mixed in um, questions that are like <clears throat> more serious and just like kind of from non-Muslims and Muslims. So this one says, were there female prophets? And why do Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the final prophet? So, prophets, they have a lot of responsibilities, right? Of course, one, the main one being able to interact freely with everyone, you know, men, women, children, everyone, you know. Um, and so, um, whatever the wisdom of Allah was, you know, we don't know, obviously, the wisdom of Allah, but Allah only sent men, male prophets, right? But that doesn't mean that w there weren't great women in Islamic history. There were great, great women in the annals of Islamic history, which uh, honestly, they're overlooked many a times. They're, they were great women, you know. Of course, we know the common Maryam radiallahu anha who was the mother of Jesus, Isa alayhi salam, and then, you know, Aisha radiallahu anha, Khadija radiallahu anha, all of these, so many great women uh, who came in the history of Islam. Um, so it wasn't necessary for them to be prophets, for them to do great things. You know, that's the entire premise, that you don't have to be a prophet to do great things, right? So, subhanAllah, each and every single person, and men or women, you know, they they did their best in their own capacity, you know? Um, <clears throat> so it wasn't necessary uh, for a specific gender, you know, to be, you know, but the, again, the idea behind a male prophet is that, uh, I mean, what's apparent to us, obviously, again, the wisdom of Allah is there and we trust the wisdom of Allah, but at the same time, um, Allah sent men as prophets so that they can reach everyone and you know navigate speak so, like social environments probably of course better. exactly you know and speak in public much more comfortable mm -hmm. and you know different different things sure. um, not saying that women can't but it's just at the time at the time you know yeah. different at that time obviously it was much different than how it is now and mm -hmm. right you know whatever the situation was um, and, the, and the second part was the Prophet uh, uh, why do Muslims believe that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was the final prophet uh, that's just a core part of our faith mm -hmm. that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him he was the last messenger to come uh, on the line of prophets starting from Prophet Adam Alayhi Salam and continuing on with Prophet Noah Prophet uh, Moses Prophet Abraham all of these prophets um, you know to Prophet Isa Jesus Alayhi uh, Salam and the succession and the prophet, final prophet was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Good. So another person asked, mental health is a popular subject in today's age and mm -hmm. that people are finally starting to speak up a lot more about. Where does Islam, where does it stand in Islam and how do we justify suicide? <clears throat> um, so I know those are two very, yeah, like, yeah, mental I mean, health and then suicide. suicide. Those are two right, different right, right, things, right? right? I mean, I, that's yes. why I, I threw me off the last yeah. part of the question. They're, but they're excellent with the phrasing of their question. <laughs> yeah. like everything, boom, yeah. <laughs> to the point. Yeah, so... Um, Obviously, mental health is a serious thing, you know, that's a serious issue which people are battling and um, cannot be denied. And of course, the religion and Islam does definitely, you know, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu gave uh, certain remedies for, for different problems, right? So there are certain du'as and certain, uh, you know, uh, you know, adhkar which you can recite, which basically prove, uh, which, you know, help and assist uh, where you're asking Allah to remove your problems, right? But the, see, the thing is, right, in Islam, again, I mentioned Islam is a pragmatic religion where um, Islam uh, obviously says to turn our focus to Allah Ta'ala, right? But at the end of the day, Islam also says that this dunya, this world is a world of means, right? So now we have our creator, we have Allah, right? We turn to Allah for all of our needs and everything and necessities. But at the same time, we use the means, right? So for example, right, a person, he, he, he or she may think, okay, I... Uh, I need, you know, money, right? I need to survive, right? So I need money, right? So firstly, we say, okay, you should turn your focus to Allah. Ya Allah, you help me and assist me with wealth and you provide me with wealth. But at the same time, it's not that you just sit at home and say, okay, you know what? Allah is going to mm -hmm. send, you know, mm -hmm. money from the heavens for me or food or whatever. Maybe mm -hmm. no, as you have to go out, you have to work and you have to go through the means. So similarly, a person who, uh, you know, a person has a certain, diag he's diagnosed or she or she is diagnosed with a certain, you know, uh, sickness or disease or mental health some issue whatever it may be right um, that person obviously they you know they should turn to Allah and ask Allah for help from those problems and difficulties but at the same time that person should consult the the proper you know physicians or whoever made the doctors whoever they need to consult to get help for that specific 
you know, ailment, you know. So mm. we have both. Islam, like I said, it has a balance. You know, you turn to Allah at the same time, you take help from those who you need to uh, to get better. Yeah. Mm. As for suicide, I mean, yeah, that's a whole different topic of its own, you know. Mm. Uh, and inshallah, you know, uh, there's no, I mean, obviously we, um, suicide is a whole different topic. And, you know, but at the end of the day, a person should never have to or f- be forced or be put in a situation where they sh- compliment, co- uh, you know, contemplate suicide, you know, or mm. where they feel like there's a need that they have to end their life uh, because of so much problems, you know. Uh, you know, subhanAllah, there are so many people out there and anyone who's listening to this, you know, and, and thinking or maybe even uh, one day in their lives, they may be thinking, you know, uh, I'm I'm going through too much or I can't handle this. There are always so many people who care about you, you know, that, you know, you can speak to them, your know, parents, your siblings, your family, your friends. I'm sure any single one of them you can speak to and inshallah, they can, you know, assist you. And if one person cannot assist you, you can speak to an- another person. And if they can't assist you, you can continue looking and searching for that person who can help you, uh, you know, to the extent where you don't feel that you have to uh, end all of your problems at once, you know. This girl asked, I'm a bi-Muslim girl. What if I fell in love with a girl and wanted to marry her? Being gay and Muslim, is that curable? Um, so, uh, Islam has its laws, right? I mean, there are certain, again, uh, Islam has um, its guidelines, right? So, there are certain things in Islam which are prohibited and forbidden. Um, again, so in Islam, there's one concept I want to speak about before we touch on this, right? We have a concept which is, uh, hate the sin, not the sinner, right? So we say that a person who who's indulging in a certain sin, right? A person who's uh, drinking alcohol, a person who's doing drugs, whatever it may be, you know, that person we don't we never hate the individual, right? That's the rules of Islam. We never hate the individual. We don't like the sin or what they're involved in, right? So that's the premise behind all of this, right? Now, as for the act of homosexuality or whatever it may be, right? Uh, a person may like the opposite gender, but um, again, in Islam, that's prohibited, right? And that's clear cut. The same There's no, gender. Yeah, so, sorry, yeah, the same gender, right? A person may like the same gender, um, uh, and um, uh, obviously, I mean, that's prohibited in Islam, so there's no really leeway for that, you know? So if you do like someone from the opposite, gen- uh, from the same gender, um, uh, I guess just, you know, keep it to yourself and, you know, uh, try to work through it, you know, if it's possible, work through it. Uh, again, that's uh, another whole lengthy discussion as well how you can you know you know uh, overcome you know homosexuality or whatever it may be but again this is a touchy subject but uh, at the end of the day this is what islam teaches you know mm-hmm. islam teaches this uh, at the same time islam also teaches that you know compassion and you know love for each and every single human being again anyone who is indulging in homosexuality it's not like we don't like them again we have to make that distinction right we don't hate or dislike them as an individual we just don't like that act which they're doing. Right? What about the last yeah. part where she says, um, like, is I've heard this from different people. Is it is it curable? Like, I've heard that, mm-hmm. um, you know, different imams will say, like, you know, um, I can cure them of their homosexuality. Like, mm-hmm. what does that mean? Is that a real thing? Or, like, you need to pray more. Mm-hmm. Like, sometimes they'll say that, like, oh, you just don't pray enough. Mm-hmm. You need to, like, look for God for guidance. I mean, it's just an, an I mean from uh, what we can see is an indulgence type thing it's a sin i mean for our you know and in, in islam it teaches that you know it's a sin right so mm-hmm. all sins um obviously you can stay away from them and uh, to a, to a degree where you don't fall for that sin again you know what i mean like for example other sins you know i don't want to compare it to different right. other sins mm-hmm. but each and every single sin is right. different right but this particular sin we would say that um maybe there is a cure for it i I I can't cure it, you know. I don't know the cure for it, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if there is a cure for it, right? But I'm just saying that uh, the guidelines of Islam are that you know homosexuality is a sin. Um, we don't dislike the people who commit the sin, right? We just dislike the sin itself. And um, for uh, some reason, with this one, it feels like it's the one that it's like, you know, you can be. Muslim there's there's people that are Muslim and they drink and there's Muslims that have mm-hmm. that have premarital sex and like the list goes on but like for some reason it, it just seems like we look at people that are Muslim and gay as like you can't be those two things um and then like once you're one of those things like you can't uh you can't go back or something so is it i mean it's a, it, you're saying it, it it is a sin but like is it possible to be those two things and still be Muslim turn and to Allah for guidance and things. Like. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, again, yes, I did mention it. It's a sin. So it's not separate from the religious. Meaning, a person, like you said, a person can be Muslim, and being gay does not take that person out of the religion. And that's something which we need to understand. Mm-hmm. Many people they feel like a person's gay or a person's whatever maybe, and that's it. They're done. You know, we can't be friends or whatever maybe, or we can't. You know, you know, they're not Muslims anymore. You know, but that's not the case. Mm-hmm. A person, even though they're gay or whatever maybe, they're um. That's their personal choices and decisions, which they, you know, obviously have. Um, but again, at the end of the day, that doesn't remove them from the fold of Islam. And Islam doesn't say, okay, you know what, you're gay, and that's it, you're gone. No, Islam obviously, uh, like again, it's a sin, uh, and we dislike the sin itself. But we don't dislike the person, and we don't kick the person out of, and nor can we kick the person out of the fold of Islam. We, who are we to judge a person mm-hmm. uh, and say he's Muslim or non-Muslim? You know? I had a second part. Um, okay. Is like, I heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but mm-hmm. I heard a big part why it's a sin is because you're not supposed to have like intercourse um, for leisure purposes. Like it's only supposed to be to reproduce, right? Mm-hmm. Is that like a big part of it or? I mean, so um, obviously... And there's is that true? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> obviously there are certain... Um, uh, wisdoms maybe right behind a certain ruling right for, so for example right alcohol being prohibited there's a reason behind it and the reasons are clear you know a person gets drunk a person does different different things which a person in his normal state of mind would not do right so uh, obviously you know a person won't drive drunk you know so these are just wisdoms okay these are the wisdoms behind not being able to drink right but the prohibition of alcohol is not based on that wisdom you know the prohibition of alcohol is based on the commandment of allah i hope you know it's not too difficult or not too you know deep but basically the prohibition is from allah so we believe allah said this that's it okay. you know what i mean now everything else is just wisdoms behind mm. that that we may understand but at the end of the day is the wisdom of allah which is complete and pure and of course this is just one thing again um, islam is a beautiful religion the more you look at it the more you study it the more you learn about the religion, you'll just fall in love with it. There are certain people who take one aspect of the religion and they focus so much on that one aspect and they don't, uh, they don't even try to learn about the rest of the religion or they just they think it's a non-negotiable factor and that's it, you know? Mm. As well, opposed... Okay. I'm thinking of the girl who asked this question mm-hmm. and I'm yeah. wondering if one of her questions might be, well, if it is a sin and, you know, I'm not supposed to indulge in or whatever... If God made me this way, mm-hmm. then how am I not supposed to partake? It's, I'm supposed to obey God, but God made me this way. Mm-hmm. What would you say to her? So, Allah Taala has God has given us different. Uh, Allah Taala has given us. Um, Allah Himself says in Allah Allah says that Allah inspired us uh, with the righteous path and the wrong path. Meaning Allah told us about both paths. Meaning Allah Taala has given us the choice to decide which path we want to choose, right? So now, we can't blame Allah or God saying that God made me this way, that's why I'm going to do this. That's just, you know, blaming Allah. Okay, Allah's made me this way. That's why I'm, you know, I am who I am, you know? As opposed to a person saying that, listen, this is uh, my choice. I choose to take this path. I choose to, um, you know, do what I'm doing, you know? And yeah, of course, a person has different desires, you know, not everyone's the same. People have different desires to do different things. People, some people, they love playing video games for hours on end. You know, another person may see that and think, oh, wow, this person is crazy. Now, that person can say, I blame God for making me love video games so much. You know what I mean? That's your personal choice. Like that were yeah. our cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah, I think, so I think we could go on about yeah. this topic for a for long time. Mm-hmm. And then, like, even just thinking about the existence of gay churches and stuff, I don't even know, like, where you could take yeah. this topic but for the sake of moving on and getting to the rest of the questions um, uh, this person asked why do women pray behind men <laughs> why do women pray behind men it's just a simple uh, so now uh, per, I mean uh, going back to how Allah created men and women with different desires and whatnot. right now a person um, you know especially how men behave towards women you know what i mean now uh, especially in this day and age that's very you know evident you look at a person and look at a man especially how women are treated nowadays you know as objects and whatnot uh more so if you were to put a woman in front of you uh and she would be bowing and prostrating you would uh, as a man you know most men would be focused on that woman instead of the prayer you know what i mean so obviously one uh, that's a wisdom these are all wisdoms of 
you know, why men pray in front of women, right? At the end of the day, it's just Allah telling us that, listen, this is how we should pray. Um, it's it, See, the thing is, the, we have a misconception here where we think that um, men praying behind women means that they're subjugated or that they're inferior, inferior to men. Where that, that's, that's, that's not the case, you know. Mm. Uh, in many different other roles, women lead, you know, men. And that's perfectly fine. But it's just in prayer, uh, there are certain categories. So now children are in between men and women. Now, w do you think that children are superior to women or children are inferior to men? It uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't make sense there. It's mm. just a, f a form of uh, categorization, basically men, then children, then women. That's how it is, you know. Okay. Can a Muslim woman marry a non-Muslim man? The easy, uh, the short answer is no, right? Because many times what happens is uh, a person marries a different, uh, someone from a different faith and um, their own faith. See, the thing is what we need to prioritize is our faith, right? Uh, uh, and, you know, it's easy to say that we need to prioritize our faith, but we need to understand how beautiful our faith is and that should govern our life, basically, you know? So, you know, everything we do as Muslims, you know, as Muslims, what we do is follow the commandments of Allah shown to us by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him. Right. So uh, whatever he says in the method which he said, uh, that's how we try to live our daily life. Right. So at the end of the day, um, that's how we should uh, attempt. And uh, whatever we do, we try to follow in their footsteps and how they, uh, you know, obviously went ahead in moving forward with those uh, in their lives. So I'm assuming this is from a non-Muslim, but he asked, what is halal food? And why does it have a bad rep with the Sikh community? Um, halal food is basically food or, or animals which have been slaughtered according to Islamic principles, where, which is, uh, and many people, they get scared or they, they are not scared necessarily, but they're apprehensive or they don't know what halal food is and so they are very confused you know as to what halal food is. halal food is actually uh, a lot more sane right so in, in islam right we're um we're prohibited from hurting animals unnecessarily so many uh, many of these slaughterhouses i'm talking about non-halal right they stun the animals like to the extent where the animals are in severe pain right and then they uh, butcher them and whatnot right but in islam it's prohibited to uh, harm the animal unnecessarily right so that's one of the uh, the conditions. Another condition is that you should not, um, you should not cause pain to. Meaning, basically within that is basically you shouldn't cause pain to the animal before that the slaughtering. So we believe uh, as Muslims that uh, we have been created to worship Allah, right? For whatever reason, Allah created us to worship Him, and everything around us has been uh, to facilitate that, right? So now, the the earth, you know, our jobs, everything should revolve around us, you know, um, obviously. Uh, you know, worshipping Allah, right? So now, even the animals. Now, of course, uh, Islam prohibits abuse to animals, right? But at the same time, we believe that animals were created uh, to an extent to help us and feed us, you know what I mean? Um, now, that doesn't mean that you abuse the animals or you hurt them before you kill them, right? So that's why, uh, going back to halal, halal is basically, uh, um, you try uh, take out all the blood from the animal, right? And I don't want to get too gory or anything, but... Uh, basically, you just uh, as much as as humanly as possible, as humanely as possible, you try to, uh, you know, end the life of the animal quickly so that you can take uh, food from or you can eat the animal, basically. So uh, they slaughter in such a method where all the blood is removed as opposed to the blood remaining and, you know, uh, and you eating the blood of the animal along with everything else. Um, and also you're supposed to uh, slaughter the animal quickly so that it's, you know, the animal doesn't, you know, isn't pained or you know, isn't hurt because of what you're doing, you know? Do you so. know why it has a bad rep with the Sikh community? Um, no, okay. I don't know. Actually, I have read something on that, um, that I, I'm totally forgetting what it was, but yeah. mm -hmm. there's something there that, like, um, mm -hmm. there was a problem. It, like I think it's the idea of, like, having food preyed on, but we'll get it checked. And somebody can let us know. When you find out, somebody else research yeah, we'll and let us know. But also, mm -hmm. um, some people might have that question, like, halal versus a biha. Yeah, I mean... If you want. I mean, we can go into it, but it's just basically. Um, he asked uh, if you didn't hear that. Uh, that were behind the camera is asking um, the difference between halal and zabiha. Let's make it a little more fun. Is Chick Fil A halal or not? <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's right, a good so, question. Now, now Chick Fil A is is a Christian run uh, com company, and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess that ties in with kosher 
you know, Jewish mm-hmm. rules and, and Christian rules, like, mm-hmm. would that be halal? Would that count as halal? Uh, without going into too much detail, basically, there are certain rules. So uh, the people, meaning the Christian food is halal for us, right? It is, it's meaning it's permissible for us. But if it's done, uh, again, if you say the name of God and you know, obviously you take out the blood and all of that, you know, so there are certain conditions, even if a Christian or a Jew, you know, cuts or, or slaughters the animal. And it is permissible if they do do it according to those uh, so principles. So you have to check in with the, how they actually do exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Okay. But generally what happens is they don't, you know, mm. uh, they don't fulfill those criteria because it's just a slaughterhouse where every, all the animals are just on a conveyor belt and they just, you know, mm-hmm. straight, the, a machine is just doing everything basically, mm. you know. And so if that isn't, does that mean that it's haram to eat it? Yeah. yeah. Or so it's not allowed? It's not allowed. So we assume even if it's kosher, we still have to ask? You have to find out the details, basically. Okay. If it's done properly, then then it's a possibility. But if it's not done possible, see, from my knowledge, it was if nothing else is available, you're allowed to eat it. Yeah, but I'm sure. But I mean, like we're in America, you know what I mean? <laughs> we <laughs> have <laughs> options. <laughs> it's never you, it's never reached a point where you, you don't have any options. You know, you o- you always have Subway, or tuna. You know, you always have something there. You know, there's always some vegetarian option there, especially nowadays when. We have so many vegans, vegetarians. It would, they've made a you know great contribution for our yeah. sake. You know what I mean? They've <laughs> my, helped made our lives easier. My elementary understanding of it is like, uh-huh. okay, if you eat halal, then it's good because it's halal and like yeah. you're eating what you're supposed to because it's like cut with the name of God. But if you're not eating it, you just don't get like reward points from it. That's my elementary understanding of mm-hmm. it. And then the, if you just don't get any points or not get any like get deducted any points. Mm-hmm. Basically, You're trying hard. <laughs> <I'm> trying, <laughs> she I'm wants trying. that Chick Fil A. She wants Chick Fil A for iftar. I think. Not I think. For, to, whoa, I, whoa, whoa, not for iftar. <laughs> I think. I think the the simplification of a lot of these questions is intentions, bro. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> right? Like the intent, just... <laughs> the, the intent is that like I want this Chick Fil A. So like I'm trying to like, justify. It. Is that is that an get intention? The core. I mean, it's, kind of. It's, it's sounding like it a little yeah. bit. Like it, like what can I say or make myself believe to in order to get this? Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us do it. Um, <laughs> let, let's move on. Okay. What exactly do Muslims believe about the resurrection of Jesus? So we believe that uh, Jesus, he was, alayhi salam. So whenever we say Jesus, we believe he was a prophet, right? So mm-hmm. we hold him in high regards and we respect him. And, um, uh, you know, so uh, we never desecrate or we never speak ill of him because we also respect him. We honor honor him as well, right? Anyways, um so we believe that he was not killed we believe that he was not crucified uh rather he was raised to the heavens right and we believe that he will return inshallah uh at a time obviously unknown to us but known to allah he will come back and he will uh come back as a normal person and he will assist us obviously a normal person meaning he will uh you Take know the form of a, yeah. meaning a, one of the followers of our mm-hmm. prophet muhammad you know so he'll come and he'll has help us with whatever we're going through at the time, inshallah. And what a question I think um, many people, or I, I um, hear a lot is, if you guys believe in Jesus, why don't you celebrate Christmas? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Christmas, we never, I mean, see, the thing is, uh, us loving a person doesn't necessarily mean we have to celebrate their birth or, or, or their death or whatever it may be right now. Um, Christmas uh, to the best of my knowledge, as far as I remember, it's not even meaning his date of birth or his birth wasn't even. If you go through the scriptures and everything, it wasn't even in a wintry time or in December or all mm. of that. You know, when you look yeah, at it, that. you know it's a, it's at a completely different time and uh, basically it's all commercialized at this point. You know what I mean? People just want to make yeah. money, and that's why we have so many different. You know, uh, obviously, you know, holidays and. Well, it's in succession, in succession one after the other, especially because pe- people want to make money. And you look, I think it's the second or third uh, most commercialized, or even I think the first. I'm, I, I'm highly mistaken, but um, they make so much money off of Christmas itself. You know, yeah. My uh, my uh, Congolese uh, refugee family, who's from Africa, they didn't even know that like people celebrate Christmas here. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, it's you know, we didn't know that all of this happened. So I'm sure that there are other places that mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. similarly. Yeah, um, another person asked, is weed considered haram? I personally struggle with severe anxiety. The doctor recommended medication to me, but I don't believe in prescription medication. I started smoking weed very often, and it helped with my anxiety a ton. I'm confused about the Islamic perspective. Um, so there's a, there's a good amount of these weed questions. <laughs> by the yeah. Way. <laughs> yeah, so um, we had a discussion with Saad uh, <laughs> about this before as well. Yeah. Um, but anyways... 
Um, shout out to Saad. Right? <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Saad. Uh, but anyways, uh, basically, um, so weed, uh, say anything which intoxicates you, right, is not permissible. Right? So anything which, you know, intoxicates a person and changes that, that alters that person's state of mind, that's not permissible, right? So if weed does do that, then it's not permissible. Now, if a person needs or requires weed, right, for recreational or whatever for not, yeah, recreational. not, not recreational medicinal, sorry, <laughs> medicinal purposes yeah. right if they need it then of course if a doctor prescribes it to them then that's a different scenario you know a uh, person can even two things again we I, I've mentioned this before Islam is a pragmatic religion where Islam considers considers people's needs and uh, and, and requirements all right and Islam does not consider people's desires right because some considers people's needs so to the extent that if mm-hmm. a person so for example right um, if a person is forced or there's there's a certain tablet right or a capsule or whatever it may be which has you know which has pork in it you know but that's the only medicine available which can like cure gelatin. that person gelatin or something yeah. like that you know if but that's the only thing which can cure that per- individual then by all means he's he's permitted to take that even though pork is not permissible in our religion but because there's a need for that he can take it right mm-hmm. so similarly if a person has a, a need to you know cons- or you know smoke weed or whatever it may be then he can you know he can do it but again that has to be obviously through the proper channels mm-hmm. and you know proper doses and all, all of that you know and prescribed to him by you know a doctor and not just you know i feel like it's better for me you know <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> um what are the rules about touching yourself no one ever talks about it yeah i mean uh, Masturbation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that. <laughs> no, but um, I've uh, also like I know I've I've heard this before too, like the the thing is like why did God give me these organs, these feelings, the ability to do this if mm. it's not for, for pleasure? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, uh, see, look, again, Allah doesn't say, or you know, uh, Islam doesn't say that you can't fulfill your pleasure right mm-hmm. Islam does not say that fulfill. Islam says that you can fulfill your pleasure but in a specific manner right? there's a specific method to all of that you know what I mean so obviously <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> but anyways obviously it's just funny stuff <laughs> especially I don't know the demographic but um, but yeah I mean obviously there's no, a there's certain people asking seriously so I respect yeah, that uh, but yeah basically uh, it's not permitted uh, and um, it's but not permitted are, it's not permitted yeah okay but uh, obviously there are other ways to fulfill your desires and whatnot you know and obviously you go through the proper channels and it can be permitted leave it at that <laughs> okay um okay we'll i've been on. struggling to wear the hijab if you don't wear it can you still make it to jannah or heaven also i'd like to know the real purpose of wearing hijab i know it's not just to hide beauty mm-hmm. okay so let's let's break that down into two questions right the first part of the question was um, am I going to am I going to go to heaven hijab? if if I don't wear hijab? I know. See again, uh, hijab is a certain aspect of the religion. It's not the entire religion, right? Hijab is a certain portion or an aspect of the entire deen or entire Islam. It's not the entire Islam, you know. So a person who doesn't practice, who doesn't wear um, the hijab, it's 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 possible that a person can definitely go to heaven, you know. Uh, who are who am I to say that that person who's not wearing a hijab uh, can't go to heaven or that person's uh, you know, belief is much greater than mine, or their level of their closeness to God is much closer than, or, to, or they're closer to God than than I am. Who am I to say that I'm closer to God just because I'm, you know, wearing a certain outfit or I'm wearing certain clothes or whatever? Maybe that person could be very close to God, and that person could be doing certain things which I could never, you know, I could never do. But that person, um, you know, I remember. I, I mean, obviously a bit off topic, but person, I remember they used to go to college and they would pray tahajjud salah meaning they would wake up in the middle of the night and they would pray to Allah in while in college you know what I mean a person uh, at that time so I mean obviously a person can be close to God uh, and not wear the hijab those are not mutually exclusive meaning obviously it's uh, mm. two different things my understanding is also correct me if I'm wrong but like hijab is um, it is a concept that also exists for men um, where you should try to uh, be modest Mm-hmm. Um, it's not just like a, f- not just strictly like a physical yeah. headscarf that mm-hmm. women put on. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the Quran, when Allah speaks about a modesty and hijab, right? Allah actually speaks to the men first, 
I don't know if everyone knows this or that's not, but that's very interesting because Allah says, min A person, Allah speaking to the believers, and Allah saying that all of you men should lower your gaze first. Mm-hmm. And then Allah says, they should also, the women should also lower their gaze as well. Mm-hmm. So Allah speaks about the modesty of men, and then Allah goes on in detail, but Allah speaks about the modesty of men and us uh, controlling ourselves first, and then Allah speaks about the modesty of women. Many times, you know, as Muslims or men and women, we forget that and we think, oh, hijab is just for women and, you know, they have to be modest and we can do whatever we want. Whereas that's not the case. We all have our own, you know, guidelines. We also have to follow. This person asks, if a person is a good person throughout his or her life, but does not believe in God, will they go to hell? What is Islam's view of other religions? Um, before we go back to the, uh, can did we finish? The well, you, yeah, you did explain. She said, "What is the uh, real purpose of wearing hijab?" I know it's yeah. not just to hide beauty. I think you covered that. Right. Yeah. Sorry, so so gone with the question. He said, "If this person said, if a person is a good person throughout his or her life, but does not believe in God, will they go to hell? What is Islam's view of other religions?" So. Um, <clears throat> that's a tough. That's question. a common atheist yeah. thought, right? Like, yeah. well, I'm a good person, or this person a good person. Are they really going to go to hell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we believe that there are certain guidelines. Uh, again, Islam promotes certain things which you must believe in. You know what I mean? There are certain ideas which you have to believe in. Uh, and a person who is a righteous and a person who is searching for the truth, they'll naturally be led to Islam. Anyone who, you know, without biasness, without, uh, with a clean and uh, a clear mind, a person who studies the religions, a person who goes around and, you know, asks questions and, you know, obviously seeks the truth. That person will naturally be led to Islam. So many people, anyone who studies the religion, you can continue to you know, read and study all the religions. Um, you, you'll find the answer is within Islam. Now, the problem is many times we don't know the answer. We don't have the answers. Uh, and we think that there isn't an answer. right? So sometimes we don't know the answer but, and we think that there isn't an answer for that specific question. right? So that's, that's what leads to a lot of questions and people leaving certain faiths or uh, people not being... Uh, you know, invited to the faith, you know, but again, if a person does search for the questions, uh, search for the answer, sorry, then that person will definitely find it in Islam, inshallah. Um, there are a handful. There are a handful of Islamic rulings which simply don't make sense to follow today. As our world is advancing, for example, it's haram for a woman to travel abroad without mahram. Back then, this made sense as violence towards women was high and she was an easy target. But now we see many women travel alone for work, vacation, self-development, etc. This is a pers- personal issue for me. My dream job includes living in other countries. My parents have a hard time grasping this as they believe in I'm sinning by living abroad alone. Um, uh, the beginning of the question speci- specifically, uh, I wanted to talk about that first, where they say, where the question she asked that... Um, there are many concepts or many rulings in Islam which are not applicable today. See, the thing is, Islam was not meant for, you know, Islam was not only spe- specific for that time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, where 1500 years ago it was specific to that. No, Islam is uh, is for each and every single person until the Day of Judgment. You know, Islam is made easy for every single person. Now, uh, before going to the specifics, uh, a person who searches, and of course, like we mentioned, uh, the job of, of a mufti is to simplify the the rulings so that they can fit into day and day day to day life, our day to day life, and uh, and how we can live our day to day life following Allah and the Prophet, peace be upon him. You know, um, so it's not really accurate to say that Islam there there are rulings which are not applicable. There's always uh, everything in Islam is will always be applicable until the Day of Judgment, until the end of the world. Meaning, uh, everything is applicable. As for um, traveling uh, with the mahram, I mean, obviously that's an entire different issue, and uh, there are, you know, you can speak to a local scholar, but you can travel. You know, there are different. There's a difference of opinion, and of course, certain times it's not only about um, the parent. Uh, not allowing it sometimes it's also about the parent just you know not being comfortable with their daughter being alone and being so far away it's also a parent you know parents caring for their you know daughter or son sometimes you know i remember when i was studying in south africa it'd be very difficult you know even when i was studying in new york i remember my mother would be crying all the time you know so it's not only about you know boys my or girls son. yeah <laughs> <Lost in the country. laughs> yeah i was like you know i was young at the time so obviously 
you know, my mom was uh, worried. And mm. uh, so that's a natural parent's reaction. That a person is, you know, traveling abroad and in a whole different country, you know, where you can't just, you know, see them every now and then. It's difficult for that parent to accept. And uh, so there are different factors to all of that. You know, and Islam, you know, thinks about all of those things and, and then issues a ruling that, listen, this is what it is and th- that's how it's, mm. uh, how it should be. At the same time, I mean, uh, she said that you know nowadays it's safe, but is it really safe nowadays? You know, you look at the world and all no, the, I mean, you know, so many things are happening. And yeah, maybe in airports you may be safe, but what happens after you leave the airport? And and you know, especially in certain countries, you know, not certain, most countries, you know, you you're alone. Yeah, this is by the way, just not not just yeah. an Islamic thing. Like the every anywhere you ask, uh, and depending especially on the country you're going to, like there are concerns um, yeah. that are you know, it's not because of. Islam is because there are real legitimate threats uh, that other people also understand of course. Um, when when traveling. So and at the end of the day, it's just Islam uh, looking out for uh, you know Muslims basically. You know, mm-hmm. trying to uh, keep us protected and safe and all of that. You know, mm-hmm. that that is just the underlying rule basically. Um, this is actually uh, something I wanted to talk to about talk about as well. But mm-hmm. uh, someone asked, uh, what do you think about the show Rami? Is it a good image for Muslims? Um, and just for people that don't know, and for yourself as well, I don't think you've seen the show. No, uh, no, I haven't. So this is about Rami Youssef. He's a comedian, a very funny guy. I think you've seen him on Stephen Colbert before. Yeah. Um, he um, he has a show that is uh, kind of talks about things that he struggled with, um, but but he plays a different character in the show, also named Rami, and he kind of uh, has this idea that like you know I am a good person and I believe in God. But I do these things, which includes the premarital sex and uh, smoking weed and things like that. Um, and so the question I think that they're trying to get at is like, um, you know, are is this ultimately a, a good thing for Muslims to be in the mainstream media? Um, or is it ultimately a negative because they are normalizing a lot of, I guess, sinful acts? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Well, um Right, so we mentioned before that a person can be Muslim at the same time they can be sinning, right? So the, those are two different things, right? A person is not uh, removed from the fold of Islam because of a certain sin or whatever it may be. Uh, unless they, obviously, they, they start, you know, worshipping other gods or something. That's a whole separate issue, right? But a person, he's doing a certain sin that doesn't remove them from, from the fold of Islam. Now, the show, Rami? Rami, yeah. Rami, I mean, I, I haven't seen it, right? But... Um, it is funny, and I, I I think it is relatable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think maybe a lot of people do connect with it. Um, mm-hmm. That people are finally, oh, there's finally like a, a, like a, a modern Muslim, quote like unquote, a realistic right? version of like a Muslim mm-hmm. in TV. Yeah, I mean, well, uh, again, there are certain things which are prohibited, and of course, not everyone listens to you know all of the commandments of uh, of the religion. You know, so certain people they won't follow certain you know aspects of the religion and that's their personal choice you know but when you i guess when you post it online for every or post it or make videos or you know a tv shows out of it then the problem what happens is everyone thinks it's okay you that's know the I mean? standard maybe yeah that's that's that becomes an issue right but what about from um, the outside in so like um white america black america whoever else non-muslims watching it and being like oh like Okay, they're, so they're like, just like us. They're yeah, yeah, for lack of a better way to yeah. say it, just like us. Yeah, but I mean, there's no need for us to assimilate. fit or assimilate. Sure. You know what okay. I mean? There's no. Fair. I remember um, who was saying many times we say that the 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 America is a melting pot. Where well, that's not the case. America is not a melting pot because we don't need to blend or we don't need to melt our own identities to fit into everything else. You know. Mm. Uh, the better example was America's uh, salad, salad bowl, bowl, right? Where yeah. everyone has their own unique personalities and everyone brings that and w- that's what America is, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's how, uh, there's no need for us to show off, oh, you know, I drink just like you or I do this, you know, that's mm-hmm. why I'm an American. That doesn't make any, that doesn't make you an American, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't feel the need yeah. for that to be displayed yeah. out there. I think the next couple actually have to do with a similar thing. So mm-hmm. I don't want to like make this super extended, but... Um, it says what do you think of people like Dean Squad or ourselves uh, they were talking about us as in like our Ronald Pono squad Mm -hmm. um, who use culture and and, um, religion to make it uh, I guess informative or whatever in a comedic or entertaining way Um, and then they also gave these examples of um, 
Sports uh, Muhammad Ali, who was a boxer and promoted Islam uh, to a lot of people. There's a girl who is um, a Sports Illustrated model for the first burkini girl. Mm-hmm. Burkini is a bikini in a form of a burqa. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they also were talking about Malcolm X uh, being featured in a Playboy issue. Um, it says his autobiography was published in Playboy, so... What if Allah made Playboy exist so that Malcolm X's story could get out and bring <laughs> thousands to Islam? There's a lot of, uh, that it says there, but let's just kind of put that all into one thing. And so, like, using, f- I guess, uh, forms of media uh, that are not typical uh, to spread Islam or or a positive image of Islam, and and there's the range that goes from Dean Squad, who are those singers um, that sing about Islam. But many people say that, you know, they're haram at the end of the day because they're making music exactly. all the way to Malcolm X being featured in Playboy, which is a kind of like a pornographic magazine almost. Mm-hmm. See, I mean, uh, first of all, for those uh, for Playboy, you know, posting my Malcolm X's, you know, speech or whatever, maybe. I mean, that for obviously I'm not sure, but that doesn't seem like they're promoting you or they... No, <laughs> but um, it doesn't seem like Shall they. We? <laughs> that were definitely ready. <laughs> Whoa. But um, yeah. but it doesn't seem like they want to actually promote Malcolm X as opposed to them just want to, wanting to promote their brand. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like ride the wave of like, oh, Malcolm X is popular. It's exactly. Popular. Okay. Exactly. And I mean, oh, we're also you know we want to support Malcolm X or whatever mm-hmm. it is, and we want to show how he was. You know, so well, let's mm-hmm. just put up you know mm-hmm. a, a, a quote of Malcolm X or a spe- or, you know. A portion of his speech and people will listen to that and then they'll open they'll buy the magazine or whatever it is and they'll read into the different other parts of the magazine and they'll buy into it you know so mm-hmm. it's just more of what i th- think you know it's just a form of them um, as a marketing strategy you know mm-hmm. I mean, people want to they want more people to buy their magazines you mm-hmm. know? intentions so, intentions intentions, intentions <laughs> yeah. this person asked why is there so much hate between sunni and shia communities there should not be I mean, the, obviously, that's so Sunni and Shia are what, right? So basically, um, I mean, sects of Islam. different sects of uh, Islam, right? Basically, right? So Sunnis, um, uh, I mean, I don't know how how I would s- describe the difference between them. I mean, so sh- uh, we all believe in Allah and we all believe in the Prophet, right? The Sh- Shias, what they believe in is basically they have a certain certain other imams that they also hold to. An esteemed regard uh, to the status of a prophet, basically, you know. So, based off of that, uh, I don't know why there's so much hate. There should not be that much hate in the world, and especially amongst the Muslim community. Um, there's this one beautiful quote in Urdu, which um, I, I have the Urdu. I just don't want to read it and make fun of myself. But um, basically, the idea is that you know every single Muslim calls the other Muslim, you know, as a non-Muslim, whereas only the non-Muslim looks at all the Muslims and say, oh, you guys are all Muslims, you guys are all the same. Mm. But as within us, we're like, oh, you're not this, you're not that, you're not this specific group that I'm following, you know? Whereas the, the more labels you create, the more difference and the, the more you know disunity there is in our ummah and our, you know, uh, basically collective community, you know? So we, uh, as much as possible, we should try to break those barriers and try to avoid, you know, creating these differences you know what i mean we all believe in pretty much the same things there are just a certain people who obviously they take certain things out of proportion and they believe in certain other things but for the most part we all believe in the oneness of allah and believe in believe in the prophet uh, and violence of course is never tolerated in islam and we should never resort to that to prove our point you know are, are sushi kids real sushi can you kids be sunni real? and shia sushi kids are definitely real. sushi <laughs> <laughs> okay um i'm gonna skip the next one mm-hmm. okay the the medicine one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to skip that one. Okay. Um, if fasts are too long where you live, can you follow the timings of another country or Mecca? I mean, it depends on now how long. You like know what I mean? you're now? in Iceland and days. Yeah, where is it like? So now if the days, if basically... I was actually in Iceland, end. I think, what, two years ago or something? That it, it was, was Ramadan. Long. And it was daylight <laughs> all day. It was like, there was like a, an hour that it was, the sun was down. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. in, in that scenario, you'd basically follow a, a, a neighboring country or a neighboring um, body of land, basically. Like who, UK or something. Yeah, something like that, basically. UK is pretty long, too. Though. It's pretty long there, too. But it's not as long as, you know, Iceland yeah. or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. But, um, but basically somewhere nearby where it's not as stringent or difficult to fast. Yeah. I is wonder there, what the shortest one is. Is there like a time limit? Like, 
okay, like, if it's more than 20 hours, you should probably mm -hmm. go to the next country. Or is it, like, if you're phys physically capable? Of yeah, being... physically capable, okay. that's what it is. Can I ask the one before, or is there a reason you skipped them? Uh, it's just too specific. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, try it. I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I think it. it's cool. I study medicine, and my exams are during Ramadan this year. Mm -hmm. One of the exams is a clinical exam, which means that I'll have to carry out procedures, sometimes around intimate areas on men and women. I can't get this rescheduled, so would this break slash have a negative impact on my fast? Right, so we spoke about Islam being um, uh, a religion which considers the needs of people and, and the requirements of people, right? And one thing which we require are, do are doctors, you know? Um, and a person needs to fulfill these certain procedures or this is oh she's that person studying medicine or that person yeah. Yeah, yeah so there we go so a person has to fulfill these criteria to become a doctor right now um so because of the need of you know we need doctors right now doctors are given certain uh you know a leeway in terms of a person's you know uh looking at a person's body or different parts of their body because of the need you mm -hmm. know so there's a need for the doctor to look at a person's body you know unclothed right so that's okay you know, for the doctor, and that doesn't have an effect on their fast uh, because mm -hmm. that person's uh, fast is between him and Allah, and he must fulfill those obligations to, you know, to fulfill that, you know, doctor or whatever it is, basically. Is getting a skin fade haram? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like skin, the hair? Like I, yeah, should, yeah, I should yeah, have asked this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should avoid that. <laughs> You should avoid uh, skin, skin fades and designer beards. Why? Yeah, yeah. Skin fades, I mean, so there, there's like um, one specific narration from, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, where he says that a person shouldn't have different, uh, he shouldn't shave a portion of the, his head and, uh, you know, keep uh, hair on uh, on the other portion. Now, this doesn't mean that that, that specific, that refers to a, f a skin fade, literally a skin fade. Now, a person who has a fade, that's a different story. That's okay. Hmm. You know, like a person has different levels of haircut. That's you ever okay. got a skin fade? Do you know fade? what the reason for that <laughs> yeah, would be? Gonna... What, the skin fade? No, like what the Prophet, peace be upon him, had said about not mm -hmm. having different lengths of hair on your head. Again, we, we mentioned before that there are certain um, commandments and rulings. Uh, we just believe in the rulings themselves. And the wisdom behind it, we don't really know. You know what I mean? So he yeah. said that don't do this. We just say, okay, cool. Can you get like time. designs and stuff or no? <laughs> <laughs> Look pretty funny at that, at that point. You know what I mean? Um, but, but yeah, you should avoid it. You know, okay. there's no need for that. <laughs> um, how to not be weird when washing your feet in the bathroom at work? <laughs> <laughs> and do you have to take off your socks? Yeah, so... Um, Oh, that's, wudu that's a, socks though yes so now there are certain wudu socks right especially one of my friends shout out his name is he sells it's a company called Burda right um, they have the, oh wait you weren't there yeah. I think I think I might have uh, Ikna? met him yeah Ikna. yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so anyway so there's a company called Burda uh, Hassan Shibli also I don't know you, can, you guys know Hassan Shibli mm. but anyway he's a, he's a lawyer and stuff mashallah anyways so he was advocating for that as well um, but basically um, there are certain socks which you can make wudu <laughs> on Right, so you can wipe over. Right, there are certain socks. Man, obviously, those socks have to uh, fulfill those requirements, and I don't want to get too into the details and stuff. But yeah, I think it was like a joke question. Yeah, I so, think. But uh, you know what? Like the yeah. uh, desis especially make such a mess when we go to places That's to make so wudu. True. There's uncles that I see that are like throwing water on their yeah. face <laughs> like a mile all away, over the ground, and it's all over, and they just walk the out. They're like coughing out everywhere, yeah, yeah. like. Doing their nosy, yeah. Like, nosy. <laughs> yeah no, they became like, so they become like the avatar water bending and all of this. <laughs> thing, basically, you know. No, yes. Honestly, it's so sad because I remember one of my uh, one of my friends who was in the hospital and um, and uh, there were people going to visit him and he was a scholar. So when they would go to visit him, they they would destroy the bathroom, meaning not oh not, not the bathroom, God. meaning like they would go do wudu. Yeah, they thought they they, they had to make wudu to visit the scholar. Whereas that's just making things difficult on yourself. You know, I mean, you didn't have to do that. Mm. You know, what I mean, but because they thought it was a requirement to make wudu mm. to go visit the scholar, uh, they, you know, I mean, they made things very difficult for the the hospital staff. So to the extent where the hospital staff complained to the family that listen, th this is what's happening, and obviously the family is going through enough as that's it is. That's embarrassing. And now uh, them having to make. Aren't that you announcement. supposed to use like a uh, like. Uh, not waste a small water. amount of water yes. too. Yeah, like, you're not supposed to waste. I seen this dude use like you know a handful, and like, I don't know if you've seen this YouTube video, but yeah. he's very good at it. He uses it <laughs> the whole thing. Like, anyways, yeah, so as much as <laughs> possible. We'll we'll kind of, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Something that many people fear today that we didn't really have growing up is mass shootings. 
do I stop? I think we actually talked about this one time uh, where I was talking about like every time I go to a mosque, whenever we're, mm-hmm. we get to, uh, we have the privilege of getting to travel a good amount for things that we do. And like a lot of when we stop over mosques and stuff like that, I do think about that all the time with like mass shootings and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what would happen if at this place this happened? Like, um, so mm-hmm. they're asking, do I stop praying if something happens? Uh, and do we all go to heaven if we die in a shooting? Should we try to get the gunmen? Okay. Um, <laughs> so basically, right, obviously this is a serious issue, but yeah. the way they worded it was just kind of funny. But um, now, see, the thing is, if you stop praying, you're allowing the Islamophobe, I mean, you're allowing them to win. You know, you're allowing them to prevent you from praying at at, at your mosque, you know. So... And Alhamdulillah, honestly, like even in our community, we've actually stepped up security. We've actually been hiring like armed guards, you know. Mm. So m- many of the mosques, they are hiring and they are upping their security because of the recent events. And it's very unfortunate that we have to uh, actually be concerned about our safety. Even living in America, we have to be concerned about our safety when you're going to the mosque or when you're going to school or something. Uh, as simple as that. Like the one the in the New mall. Zealand that happened, that was crazy. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. definitely, you know. Um, but it, it, not only that, but other places, uh, when you're going to the church or when you're going to synagogues, uh, places of worship or schools or malls, they should never be, uh, you should never have to worry about your safety or security in those places. You're, you're, you should never have to worry about your kids' safety or security mm-hmm. in those places as well. So it's very uh, unfortunate, you know, that we have to do that. But um, for the most part, alhamdulillah, our communities are safe. You know, the masjids are safe. And we do have, you know, most mosques, as far as I know. You know, I just saw this article recently, just today, I think. Uh, it's, it's in New York especially, um, they're, you know, also improving security. They have armed guards. Again, this past Juma, we had armed guards in our in our masjid, which was two days ago, uh, yesterday. And then every single night of Tarawi, we'll have armed guards, you know. So, inshallah, I mean, unfortunately, we have to do this, but... Um, we are, you know, stepping up security, and uh, and a person should, and a Muslim should never feel that okay, I don't feel safe in my own masjid. You know, at the end of the day, see, at the end of the day, um, a person can, you know, can die in the confinements of their own house. You know, but not through gunshot means or whatever maybe any way a person wherever death is decreed, that person will die there then and there. You know, there's mm-hmm. no, you know, a person shouldn't be feared. Or shouldn't be so fearful of death that they don't they leave their day to day activities that mm-hmm. they stop going to different places they stop doing those things which make them happy and which you know bring them closer to God uh, just for the sake of certain people or, or something which may or may never happen you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, and again the mosques and the different uh, places of worships are you know uh, they are upping their security and they are trying to trying their best to prevent these things from happening and um as community members we should definitely try to to help our communities uh in whichever way we can uh as much as possible uh, and keeping our communities safe so to answer the the last part do you break your prayer and try to get the gunman do you just keep praying or no no break your i mean uh, see the thing is in islam again pragmatic pragmatic religion where we believe uh if something's happening if if someone's taking something or stealing something from you break your prayer you Mm -hmm. can pray again later you know what I mean? If you can save one life, you know, definitely break your prayer. Mm-hmm. Even if you know, you see something happening, break. If if you see a child, you know, getting hurt, stop your prayer. You can pray again, you know, but that mm-hmm. child can get hurt or someone else. Even I'm not obviously being murdered is a whole different thing. But anything minor happening, someone stealing your clothes or someone stealing your book bag or someone taking certain things from you. Stop your prayer. You can pray again later. And uh, to the extent that sometimes there's an entire scholarly debate whether you should break your prayer and respond to your mom's or your parents' call. There's an mm, entire meaning. Uh, the scholars, they say that you should, many times you should break your, especially if your parent, they need you, break your prayer and go attend your parent and see what they need. Meaning mm. even if they're calling you, just, you know, Saad, come here, you know, break your prayer, go attend to what they need and then come back and finish your prayer. I usually like hum. Huh? And my mom knows. I'll <laughs> hum. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. And then she's like, okay. Okay, okay. I've done that. <laughs> yeah. So, um. but yeah. So this person asked, how do you respond to people that say that Islam is a violent religion and Muslims should be kept out of the U.S.? This is obviously a very <laughs> extreme. What, what are those like uh, verses that people talk about when they say like, oh, like it says hmm. in the Quran that like you should kill that all is, non-Muslims yeah. and this and that? Like, See, the thing is, right, people, um, uh, what do you say to those people? You say to those people that, you know, go educate yourself. 
you know, go learn, go study and study with an unbiased mind. You know, a person who has a certain idea in their mind, right? We spoke about this before. A person has a certain uh, viewpoint, you know, already they like for they, they'll search for that. You know what I mean? Uh, again, if you look and open any, you know, there are so many YouTube uh, skits where people they go around and they reading from the Bible yeah. where they had a cover of the Quran on it you know and they say oh this is what the Bible says or this, this they, they the say Quran this is what the Quran says but oh look this is actually a Bible you know and people say they're surprised that even the Bible has certain verses you know which are you know ambiguous or they sound very scary take right? out of context but yes exactly so when you take some anything any of the when you take anything out of context you know obviously that's dangerous and it can be misinterpreted in many different ways not only the religious text but more so in religious text but at any time you take someone's conversation and you take bits and pieces you know and you formulate your own thought process that's what will be presented to everyone else you know but as opposed to you going out there and you learning uh, again, like I mentioned before, there is an answer right now. We just need to go there and go learn and go study the answer. You know, uh, we may have certain questions. Why does Islam say this or does Islam say this? You know, so go and find out, you know, ask your local scholar or ask uh, someone you trust and find the answer. You know, again, the answer is definitely there. It's just we don't know it. You know, many times we we don't, you know, go many times we think, oh, that might be the answer and we leave it at that, mm -hmm. you know. But a person should go there and educate. Again, I can't emphasize how important education is. A person needs to educate themselves and study and learn, uh, again, with an unbiased mind and with a, uh, with a clear thought process of how I can actually learn and find the truth. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, inshallah, you'll find the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, why did the Prophet, peace be upon him, marry a nine-year-old? Now, okay, so, um, see, the thing is, right, we don't refute it. Right, we don't reject that happen. Right now, of course, see that the the thing is at the time, right at at, at the time of the Prophet peace be upon him, right, uh, the people around him they would criticize each and every single thing that he would do. They would call him all sorts of names. They criticized him. They would call him a uh, magician, a sooth a sooth slayer, what all of these things. They would call him all of you know. They mentioned all of they cursed him in every single form they could, right, and that they tried, right, but they never called him a pedophile. Right, because that was the norm at that time. You know, if that was wrong at that time, they would have definitely brought it up. You know what I mean? And it's not like our books are omitting that. You know, our books clearly mention everything that they spoke about against our prophet. You know, it's not like they or our books are rejecting that. You know, our books have their statements as well, where they're claiming that the prophet is this, the prophet is that. Obviously, which is untrue. But if uh, if at that time, you know, marrying her was a sin or something no not, well, not if if marrying her was something wrong the people around him the non-muslims the those who hated him the most they would have made that a point of contention and they would have uh, brought that up and they would have criticized him based on that but they didn't because at that time uh, it was a whole different yeah. so obviously 1500 years ago it was completely different I, than it I, is now i heard that once you have your menstrual cycle that's mm -hmm. when you're considered a woman yes. and apparently that's what happened to her i think yes so uh, in islam so we don't have an aspect of you know when you reach 16 or 18 or you, you're an adult now we say that a person once they reach or once the person uh you know they 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 attain maturity that's when they are considered adults in islam right so now a person anyone who's uh, so all the injunctions of Islam are on that person once they reach maturity. So a person that must start praying, a person, you know, all of these, you know, injunctions, injunctions of Islam fall on that person when they reach maturity. Mm. You know, so going back to that, a person, uh, we don't deny that the Prophet, peace be upon him, married her. You know, we don't deny that. Aisha radiallahu anha, she was, and there are many wisdoms behind why he did marry her. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, uh, it did happen. And if it was something wrong at that time, the, his haters would have said something against him at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. You know what I mean? For hundreds of, hundreds of years, no one said anything. Hundreds of years, you know, no one said anything. It's just in the recent past, people have brought this up and mm -hmm. people have been discussing this. Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay, so this is on the similar subject. We're almost done here, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, it says, how does the whole multiple wives thing work in Islam and when is it okay? And uh, I, I censored this next part a little bit, but it says, what level of physicality are you allowed to have with them? If you, you know. Them two together. Like we yeah, are with the multiples oh, okay, okay, okay. at the same time. So, so, at the same time. <laughs> so Islam, again, gives its... <laughs> 
por si se no. Dice Treyway. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, um so Islam does permit four wives, right? Now, um but many people they look at one aspect of the religion they say, "Oh, that's it. Islam permits four wives and that's it," you know. They don't look at everything else behind that, you know. The Prophet or in the in the Quran Allah speaks about this and Allah says you can marry two, three, four but if you feel you cannot do justice to all three all four or all two both of them then you cannot have more than wife one if you feel if if you are unable to maintain justice between the two now if you can maintain justice which is obviously providing them with you know financial st- stability and you know giving them their different homes and all of that if you can fulfill all of these requirements and if you believe that you can maintain justice between between the spouses then it's permissible mm-hmm. but the problem is people they say oh i can have four wives it's just i'll just you know hop around and i'll go to whichever house i feel like or i'll just you know the the idea of it sounds you know oh my it sounds awesome you know that oh i have four different wives i have four pe- different people i can be with you know mm-hmm. but it's not that simple you know um the prophet peace, peace be upon him uh he married right but all of his wives all of his wives except for Aisha radiallahu anha she, they were all you know married before they're all widows right so they all had kids from other meaning they had some certain some of his wives they had you know kids from previous marriages and you know uh, his first marriage Khadija radiallahu anha uh, he was married you know she, uh, for her uh, to her for about uh, if i'm not mistaken about 15 or uh, about 15 years you know oh, sorry more than 15 years sorry He, from the age of 25 he was married to her so about 20 years he was married to her exclusively and she was 40 when he married her he was 25 she was 40 you know and people they they look at this especially in our days we think how can i marry someone who's older than me you know how can i marry someone who who's financially you know more well off than i am how can i marry someone with kids the prophet peace be upon him he was a virgin at the time he he was less wealthy than khadija radiallahu anha and she had kids where obviously he wasn't even married before you know so he married that type of woman you know and he, those are the types of types of women who he would marry and nowadays it's looked down upon where a person he he wants to marry a widow uh, they looked or you know they think how can you marry this this woman she has kids from a previous marriage or how can you marry this person you know so uh, people they think okay we're going to marry four you know uh, for you know young women and we'll live our life comfortably with that they all have to be that. in agreement as well right like all yes. the wives have to agree so, to that yeah so of course all of those things uh, you know fulfilling then of course if you can fulfill their requirements and if you can fulfill their uh, justices then you can have different wives you can have more than one wife you know but again uh, and being intimate with them is separately. it separately 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 yeah okay. you can't just yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you wouldn't believe it. There's a lot of people asking <laughs> about this. So very curious people out there. They're not married. They're definitely not married. That's why they're asking these questions. Yeah, <laughs> and and I don't know if they're going to be able to pull. Uh, yeah, no. more than one, anyways. Bro, like. okay. Uh, okay, this person asks, how do you motivate yourself to pray when you feel so distanced from your faith and Allah? See, um, like, and today we've been talking about, uh, like, we've been challenging very difficult questions, and I don't know how it's being portrayed, but um, many people they may listen to this and think, oh, that's it, you know, uh, it's very difficult to follow the religion, and you know, mm-hmm. he's just saying no, no, no here, and he's just making everything difficult for us. Whereas Islam is a very, you know, easy religion, and you know, it's only difficult for those people who make it difficult on themselves, you know. So it's, Islam is a very easy religion, um, and um, you know, of course, Allah. So, you know there's one hadith right there's one saying of the prophet where he mentions that on when allah ta'ala when allah when god created everything right uh, god wrote on his throne imagine inscribe you know you you know like casey nice he writes his name everywhere right mm-hmm. um, so imagine, last person i was expecting <laughs> <to bring up. laughs> no, but, no, but you know how, like he casey writes his name on everything because he feels mm-hmm. important he feels whatever maybe he wants to put his name out there right but a person he, they only write their names or they only write inscribe on certain uh things which are valuable if they feel that is important you know so for example you wouldn't put just random things on your phone or you wouldn't uh just you know inscribe random things on your t-shirt or whatever it may be right so that being said when allah created everything right allah um inscribed and allah wrote on his throne in rahmati ghalabat ghadabi my mercy overshadows my my anger from then allah ordained it basically that um uh, my mercy overshadows my Uh, anger so no matter how 
much we disappoint Allah, no matter how many times we uh, miss our prayers or how many times we, uh, you know, uh, disobey Allah, there's Allah's always there. You know, Allah's always there. And subhanAllah, honestly, you know, uh, when you turn and when you look at other people, when you look at everyone else, that's when you realize how merciful Allah is. Now, I'll explain on that. Basically, a person, right, a family member, right, let's say, you know, your father, right, um, you continuously disobey him, right? One time, two times, three, four, five. You continue to disobey your parent, right? Or your sibling or your spouse, whoever it may be, right? It comes to a point where they say, it's enough. That's enough. You know, you, you know we can't continue this. You know, you can't be, uh, you're not a good son or you're not a good friend or you're not a good, you know, sibling to me because you've been, you know, continuously disobeying me and we can't continue this, this relationship anymore. Whereas Allah, you know, Every single time you sin against him, you know, you sin against Allah and you continue to sin against Allah. You know, you're sinning for years and years and you continue to sin Allah. But one day, one night, you turn to Allah and you say, Allah, and you sincerely regret all of those bad things which you did. Allah wipes out all of those sins for all of those mistakes which you did. You know what I mean? So now, a per one thing is now a person, uh, you know, you write down something and then you cross it out. When you cross it out, there's still the sign that something was there, right? Allah doesn't only just cross out the sin. Allah completely wipes it out. I mean, completely removes that sin in entirety. So it does. it's not like, you know, when you, where your book of deeds are opened, you see, uh, you know, you have uh, X marks everywhere. Or, you know, you just have uh, things. Scribbles everywhere. Scribbles everywhere. You know, it's just wiped out and it's just replaced with good deeds, you know. So Allah's so merciful, you know. And the day you turn back to Allah... Uh, that's when you'll find contentment, you'll find peace, and you'll find happiness in following the commandments of Allah. You know, the more you, uh, again, the more you study the religion and the more you turn to Allah, the more you'll fall in love with Allah and the religion, inshallah. Um, and I think we can wrap up with this one. I'll let you have the last one. Um, so, a lot of people actually asked a similar sort of a question, um, mm -hmm. which uh, I don't know if it's like just out of curiosity or they're actually concerned, but. Uh, it kind of sums up in like, are you hopeful about the future generations? Um, one person said, the way that Christian kids treat their faith and going to church on Sundays, do you think Muslim kids will be like that in a few generations? And what would cause Muslims to divert from religion and their faith in this day and age? Um, and then there's a question about whitewashed Muslims. But I think overall, people are really wondering, like, do you, with the direction of uh, more and more Muslims in, in going towards Western ideas and stuff, are you hopeful or are you legitimately concerned about where we're going to be in, say, five, ten years? See, the thing is, right? generations from now. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is, right, um, again, Islam is not opposed to the Western ideology, meaning it's not like uh, we're completely against it and everything is wrong. See, in Islam, actually, the West. <laughs> <laughs> Many times we hear that, that person, you know, the West is some evil uh, entity that you cannot, you know, listen to or you can't obey or anything. Whereas it's actually the opposite, you know, in Islam, we're actually told that you must follow the laws of your land. This is part of the religion that you must follow the laws of your land so long as it doesn't, you know, encroach on your religion, right? So long as it doesn't contradict your religion. But we, it's a part of, part of the religion to follow the laws. So, for example, when you cut that red light, it's not only you, you know, breaking the law, you're also breaking the laws of Islam. Whoa. You know, <laughs> that's crazy, right? It's crazy to think about, but basically, I'd be that's breaking what it is. a lot of Islamic <laughs> traffic laws then. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, that's what it is, right? So now, um, uh, that's in the West. So, um, Islam is not, uh, you know, it's not, you know, going against the West per se. You know what I mean? So, in my perspective, what I believe, you know, most, as Muslims, we all need to be more involved, you know, in the different spheres of you know the western life you know so a person we need more muslims in different you know uh in different avenues and different you know professions you know we need more muslim you know police officers we need more muslim i mean there are enough muslim doctors and you know enough muslim engineers but we need more of different people and different you know uh professions so that we can what show about everyone. us are we okay in the media yeah, you space guys are great, yeah, you guys are great you know um <laughs> So we always need more people in the different uh, spheres of life and in different professions so that they can, uh, so that we can show everyone else that, listen, 
although we're Muslim, our Islam doesn't prohibit us from doing these different things. And okay, I mentioned different things and you know, halal, haram, but there are so many things as Muslims we can do. Uh, many times people think, okay, if you're a practicing Muslim, you can't have fun. People they think that you people they that think that's not that, true. Our, our yeah. friend group, wherever we go, like <laughs> yeah. we're always having fun without mm-hmm. every, literally everything, everything craziest stuff going on around yeah. us. And people they think that if you're practicing, you must stay in a certain. Uh, you must stay in the masjid you must stay in the corner of the masjid you must sit there and worship and just read the Quran 24-7 and you can't go anywhere else that's not the case you know what I mean Islam again we said that Allah sent us into this world to worship him and people might get confused that okay you know only worship him and all of that. there's so much more you know uh, Allah made our life so easy and so we can do so much at the same time uh, the Prophet peace be upon him came into this world to show us to show us how to live our lives our daily lives according to to how Allah wants, at the same time, doing the things which we need, right? So you have to work, you have to eat, you have to do all of these things, right? You have to have fun, right? Uh, The Prophet even joked as well. The Sahaba, they also joked. So many things, you know? Um, But at the same time, we have to keep those values there, you know? And I hope people reach till this part of the podcast where they actually hear this part specifically, where people, they think that a person uh, is just listening to different... um, uh, pers- or Islam is so strange, uh, it's so difficult, and uh, and it's so hard for me, and I can't do this, I can't do that. Listen, um, you keep trying your best. You know, at the end of the day, you just keep trying, and you know, inshallah, one day will come where uh, you know you'll stop doing certain things, or you know, again, you know, like I said, it's not exclusive. You can't, you can also have fun, and you can be practicing. You know, they're always those two things are not mutually exclusive, or they're not. You know, uh, you know, you you can do one and do the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And if I can say, like, um, the the most important thing that I gathered from this was the fact that you said that, like, you know, leading by love, and that's what I think that is the reason that we're sitting here today is that, like, you know, uh, it's possible for anybody that watches our content and stuff to exist uh, and 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 enjoy life the way that we do and still sit here. With a, I, I would say a friend and a brother to me, uh, Saad, who I trust a lot and like I look up to, and I and you do because you lead by example. It's such a not non judgmental way that no matter what is going on with me or whatever type of a Muslim I may be, because you only exemplify uh, in my eyes like what how to do things properly, it makes me gravitate towards you because I don't feel. Uh, you know how um, threatened, threatened mm-hmm. like I'm unco- any any of that stuff, and I think mm-hmm. that the whole thing comes down to leading by love. So mm-hmm. so yeah. thank you, thank you for being that. Exactly. Thank you for four years of Sunday school and one hour. <laughs> <laughs> and these were, by the way, these were like really kind of intense, intense, intense questions. questions. Across yeah. the and I think you did an amazing and... job. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I said, four years of Sunday school. Seriously. In one hour. <laughs> uh, before we hit the last question, are there any last words you would like to say to no, anybody actually, listening out there? Honestly, um, just. Uh, again, knowledge, right? So educate yourself. So certain things you don't know, try to find out. You know what I mean? You you have certain questions. Don't leave those questions in your mind. You ask someone about it. Find mm-hmm. out. You know what I mean? You leave those questions in your mind and those questions, they fester and they, you know, you, you reach a point where you have, uh, you, you know, you have all of these doubts created in your mind because you weren't uh, given a satisfactory answer. So find that answer. Educate yourself. Uh, and, you know, Every now and then, you know, speak to your imam, if, especially if you need to, uh, if you want to, find out who your imam is, your local imam, and reach out to them, speak to them, you know, how much you can benefit from them, you know. Uh, I'm sure they're also, you know, very great individuals, cool, awesome, all they're of not. that, you know. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, but I mean, you'll find new people, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, if you don't find one, keep looking. Find you know you a mean? man like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, but yeah, inshallah, that's all. That's all I have to say. Just educate yourself, and you know, yeah. uh, remain. You know, and doing what you're doing. I do want to say that before we end, that we asked you these questions. It's not like you were just mm-hmm. preaching on Islam. So even if the people who are listening, we don't want you to take this as a way of okay, this is these are the basis of Islam. These are just questions that you had that were posed, and I'm sure that if we had asked you to talk about certain topics, like mm-hmm. kind of open endedly, like you would be able to speak a lot about a lot of things that we could relate to. Mm-hmm. So I do want to make that a point to the listeners to not feel you know shying away from these certain things mm-hmm. these were questions that we posed that and were thank you asked. for being honest like yeah. with the questions that's pretty cool mm-hmm. but there's one last question that we ask at the end of every podcast and Shamir will take that away if you could describe yourself as any flavor what flavor would it be and why 
Oh man, that's a tough one. So think of flavors. Could you? No, ice cream flavors. <laughs> <favorite recipe. laughs> anything. Um, it doesn't have to be only ice cream. Just yeah, whatever anything. type of flavor that you think describes you best and why. Give us a good reason for it. Could even be a food. Anything, like anything. sweet, salty, spicy. Think of all mm-hmm. of them. And what do you? I would. I mean. I don't know if they have my kind of flavor. <laughs> you can make one up. Make one. But basically, so basically, I mean, I would love to say that there's a balance, right? I would, you know, consider myself a balance between both, right? So now a balance between, uh, you know, fun and religion and all of that, you know what I mean? So somewhere in between there, uh, I don't know, maybe white chocolate, white fudge, something like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Something like you know, like two contradicting or two opposite things, you know, oh, something like that. That works. Yeah. All right, white chocolate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, Benga- he's, he's Bengali, so he got that Bengali spice in there yeah. too. Oh, okay. no, definitely. definitely. Okay. No, um, Saad, thank you again so much no, for doing this. Course, I love okay. you, bro. Like, I, too, uh, I think so people will greatly benefit from this, and I hope so. And I want to hear feedback. Like, what did you guys think about this? Should we have Saad back on for something else? Um, sure. And and thank you all for definitely listening to this. So, it's been another week. Another flavor. A little less stranger. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you.